I want to be a light, but it feels so dark. What's up, four eyes? <laughs> yes. Thought it was gonna be different this year. I don't understand why having a walk with God is so hard for me. He's there, as hard as that is to grasp. He's in control. I'm gonna make a difference in the world. I have no doubt you will. Hi, you're watching Movie Guide. I'm your host, Evie Carroll, and we're here with the lead actors of I Am Not Ashamed, Ben and Macy. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thanks for having us. Um, so the movie's coming out, and reading the script, how tough was that, going through that? Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, it was just so powerful, and I had to read the script a ton, uh, yeah. just because, just to know it, but, um, even more powerful than that was sitting on my bed every single night and reading her journals um, because everything you see in the script is taken directly out of her journals. So wow. it's not just a made up story. It's not just something that someone just created and we're just watching it to be entertained. Like it really happened. And so when I was reading her journals and then I would see it in the script of like, oh, that's when that happened or that's when that's that person or that's um, what was happening between Nathan and Rachel or Mark and Rachel in her life. Um, and so her mom gave me a box of just all of her journals, even her clothes wow. and uh, just everything that was in that box. And I got to keep it the whole time we were on set. And I just went through it every single night. So did either of you see the reaction of her mother while you guys were shooting? Could you, was she there and did you hear her input? <laughs> yeah, Beth Nemo was, was so involved in the project. I don't think we could have done it without her. And I know for me, one of the things that drew me to the project itself was the order of events leading up to it because I met um, Rachel's mother when I was preparing for a different role and we just oh. had this amazing conversation. She told me about her daughter and the story and then a couple months later she's like, hey, there's this role I really think you should be able to play because it's important to Rachel's story and then like you did with the journals too, I was one of the people that dropped that off and then as the movie progressed she became more and more involved and to see her come to the set for the first time and see you was one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. You know, as an actor you're telling stories that people made up in, a, in an office sometimes and to, to be telling a story of someone's life and to have like the mother there was, it, it raised the level of conviction I think for everyone on set to do it right. Yeah. And that's what we were trying to do so, so well in the movie. We were really trying to get that done for her properly. And have you heard about her response like after seeing a screening of it or? Yeah, she, she absolutely loves the movie. And that was the thing that spoke to us the most was hearing people that were there being like, yeah. this, is, this is the movie we wanted. This is the movie I've been dreaming about. This is the movie that we want to be shown about Rachel. And um, I know, I, I guess we could talk more about like my character's reaction too. The guy that I played, he, uh, he's, he's a real person too. And when he saw the movie, he was like, that's, when I heard Macy's talk in these scenes, I felt like I was hearing Rachel. Wow. And so to have that, you know, that's, that's better than any, you know, review you could hope for is to have the real people be like, no, that was, that's the way it happened. Like, that's the way that she was. That's the way I was. And so we were thrilled to hear what Beth Nemo and Nathan said about it. Now, why do you think she has kind of like a turning point of, you know, she's so joyous at some points and then she kind of gets into this darkness. Why do you think she does that? Well, I think like the battle you'll see Rachel face through the movie is the tension of, of having one foot in the world and then having one foot trying to follow Jesus. And so that's the tension that you see her wrestling with the whole movie of like, what does it really mean for me to follow Jesus and say, you know, even if no one else goes with me, stop so follow you, mm -hmm. and no matter what the cost. One of the parts of the movie, like one of the first moments you see is a handprint on the back of this dresser that she outlined and said, this is, these are the hands of Rachel Scott and someday it will touch millions of people's hearts. And that was a prophecy she felt like God put on her at an early age and that's not a prop in the movie. That was something that she really did that was actually on the back of her, of her dresser. So from the movie, I just hope that millions of people are touched for the gospel through Rachel because that's what she wanted to happen. That's the calling she felt like God put on her life. And so when people go to see it October 21st, that's the only response that I'm, I'm hoping will, will come from it. Yeah. yeah, and I would say too, Rachel lived with such purpose and she wasn't comfortable just settling. She didn't want to just go through life. Like if she was going to follow the Lord, she wanted all of Him. Mm -hmm. And she sought Him with all of her heart. And I think for um, our generation and younger and anyone, I don't know, the most important thing we can know is to really deeply and that intimately know the Lord. And I think the way Rachel lived her life was an overflow of that relationship. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just she was a kind person. It wasn't just she was compassionate. Like that was on overflow of her time with the Lord. And so I, to get to that point, Rachel really did get at at the end, you know, where she got killed because she said she did believe in God. Um, 
It was because of she knew he was worth it and she knew um, nothing else satisfied her soul and everything she tasted of the world didn't compare. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer is that really people would just draw as close as they can to the Lord after it and want to know him with everything they have. Test it out for yourself and see the difference that it can make in the lives around you. Tomorrow is not a promise, but it's a chance. You just might start a chain reaction. Jesus gave his life for me, and I'll give my life to him.